Hi Grade 7! For today, our topic is collection of data. And it was based on Mathematics 7, Quarter 4, Module Number 2. Hi Math Lovers! Are you ready? Let's learn! Have fun! Because Mathematics is fun! What I need to know. Objectives. Number one, describe ways on how to collect data. Number two, identify the different methods of collecting data. Number three, apply the Slovene's formula to get the sample size. And number four, know how to gather statistical data. What is it? Collection of data Collection of data is the first step in any statistical work after the formulation of the problem. It is the process of obtaining information. It is very demanding job which needs thorough planning, hard work, patience, and perseverance to be able to complete the task successfully. Data collection starts with determining the kind of data required, followed by the selection of sample from a certain population. Data is any quantitative or qualitative information. It should be collected in a manner that they are accurate and convenient to use. Sources of data Sources of data Data gathered may be classified as primary data or secondary data. Primary data have been collected from first-hand experience. Those data can be obtained by doing interview, observation, or experimentation. While secondary data are data collected from a source that has already been published in any form. Those data can be obtained from books, newspaper, magazines, join us, biographies, or theses of other researchers. For our sources of data, in primary data, we have interview, experimentation, and observation. In secondary data, we have books, newspapers, and magazine. Methods of collecting data We have five methods of collecting data. Number one, interview. Two, questionnaire. Three, observation. Four, census. And number five, experimentation. Interview this method is also known as direct method of gathering data. It is a person-to-person -person inquiry. The person gathering the data is called interviewer, while the person supplying the data is the interviewee. This method consumes more time and somehow expensive, but it is more accurate than the other methods. Questionnaire it is known as direct method of gathering data because it includes set of written questions to be answered by the respondents. The question should be specific and clear to obtain accurate information. Observation This method makes use of senses in gathering information that involves behavior or attitudes of individuals or a group of individuals. Census It is also known as registration. Data are collected from each and every element or unit of the population. It is used in collecting information on basic population characteristics including age, sex, marital status, household composition, family characteristics, and household size. Experimentation 
This is the process of performing scientific to determine something. This method of data gathering is usually conducted in laboratories where specimens are subjected to some aspect control to find out cause and effect relationship. Determining the size of sample Determining the size of sample In data gathering, information is usually taken from a sample. If the population is too big, a substantial number of samples is accepted. A sample is a part of a population determined by sampling procedures. One way of getting a number of samples is by using the Slovene's formula. Slovene's formula Where N is the sample size, capital N is the population size, and letter E is the margin of error. Take note, sample size refers to the number of participants or observations included in the study. Population size may refer to the size of an entire group of people, objects, events, hospital visits, or measurements. Margin of error expresses the maximum expected difference between the true population parameter and the sample estimated of that parameter. To be meaningful, the margin of error should be qualified by a probability statement or often expressed in the form of a confidence level. Illustrative examples What is the sample size if the population is 2,000 and the margin of error is set at 5% and 3%? Solution for A for our given population size 2000, margin of error 5%. The margin of error is 5% or 0.05. Remember, in changing percent to decimal, move the decimal point to the left twice. So 5% is equal to 0.05. Here is our formula. First, substitute the given. Replace N to 2000 and E to 0.05. Then, multiply 0.05 by itself, that is 0.0025. Then, multiply 2000 by 0.0025, that is 5. Now, add the denominator, that is 6. Then, simplify the fraction, n is equal to 333.33. The sample size at 5% margin of error is 333. Now let's solve for letter B. Given number of population 2000, margin of error 3%. The margin of error is 3% or 0.03. We will use this formula. First, substitute the given. Then, Multiply 0.03 by itself, that is 0.0009. Then, multiply 2000 by 0.0009, that is 1.8. Now, add the denominator. We have 2.8. Then, simplify the fraction. N is equal to 714.29. The sample size at 3% margin of error is 714. Sampling Techniques Sampling Techniques Sampling is a process of choosing a representative of a population. The chosen representative is referred to as the sample. Here are the different sampling techniques to be used. Probability sampling. In this sampling procedure, every element of a population is given an equal chance of being included in the sample. There are different kinds of probability sampling, namely 
simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. Simple random sampling. This can be done by picking up written names, placing the ball, or picking out names from a computer-generated system. Example, fishbowl technique. You will pick the name written in the paper inside the fishbowl. Systematic sampling. This is the process of selecting every nth element in the population until the desired number of samples are obtained. From a list of population, we can pick a sample systematically using a set of intervals like every fourth, tenth, fifth, or others. Now look at this sample. In the given figure, every fourth element is to be chosen as part of the sample. The sample chosen are fourth, eighth, and twelve elements. Stratified sampling. It is done by dividing the population into strata or classes. Each strato may be formed based on the member's shared attributes or characteristics. Now look at this example. In the figure above, the population is divided according to gender. Then, a sample is selected randomly from each stratum or subgroup. Cluster sampling. This is done in randomly selecting groups or cluster of elements from a population and then from each cluster. The researcher selects the sample randomly. The researcher can even opt to include the entire elements in the chosen cluster. Now look at this example. Non-probability sampling. In this sampling procedure, not every element of a population is given an equal chance of being included in the sample. There are different kinds of non-probability sampling. Number one, convenient sampling, quarter sampling, and purposive sampling. Convenient sampling. It is a method in which people are chosen because they are convenient sources of data for researchers. Now look at this example. Quota sampling. It is similar to stratified sampling, but the drawing of samples in quota sampling is not done randomly. If the desired quota is reached, the drawing of samples is terminated. Now look at this example. If the researcher needs 100 samples, after reaching the 100 element, the researcher will stop drawing samples. Purposive sampling It is done when the criteria of the study satisfy a particular sample. Now look at this example. References You have learned a lot. Thanks for watching.